G'day and welcome to part eight of the Moa Restos, the eight mowers and the ninth engine. Crazy, if you ask me. Anyway, they're all pretty much finished now. Um, a few more bits coming this week and I also went to see Norm today and he gave me, threw in a lot of stuff. I needed one of these. Um, the wind up, what do you call I can't remember what you call that. The wind starter, what are they called? Can't remember. Anyway, um, he just gave it to me. He says, take it, you know. Then he gave me another cover. And this is, both of these are in actually better nick than the ones I restored. So I've got another couple of those. And, you know, a nice fresh 125. Where are we going with this? Not sure. But anyway, it doesn't matter for now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint this one to match the other wallsy thing. I've got the, the new rope and everything coming and I've mastered these things very quickly. They're very easy to do. And so I'll put that on um, just to start it. So in the next video, which is the final one, um, we'll get them all going. That's the idea, or at least that's the plan. Whether they do or not is a different thing. Um, if they don't, it's going to be down to timing or carburetor adjustments, but we'll get through it. I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to stick some standard wheels on the 18. I haven't ordered the proper wheels for it yet. I'm not going to for this series. That sort of thing can come later. I really, if anything, the thing I want to do is stick another wrench up. Um, just so I've got somewhere to um, display them. I went to Bunnings and got this. It's the size, the size of a 36 uh, watt fluorescent tube and it's LED. It's just plastic, very cheaply made sort of thing. And you can piggyback them on top of each other. The guy on Bike a Bits had them. He, he sort of decked them out in his garage. And this was 20 bucks or something. It was pretty, pretty cheap. And so I'll put that underneath the top shelf so the bottom one's lit up and I'll just wire it in or plug it in there's a power point somewhere up there that's off the circuit for these um led lights here so they'll all come on although the clips are missing for it so i'll have to make something up there but on the at the end of the day they're going to be fine so this is the second last it's taken me a little while to get this out just because of parts waiting on parts i've got to have some content in each video it's different from the previous one there's been lots and lots of stuff on the engines and this one, the only thing I'll talk about with the engine is the, and in this video, the only thing I'm mentioning with the engines is the peg that stops the rings from um, rotating on some of them are actually bigger than the rebate in the rings allow, so they sit out. And I just talked about that for a couple of minutes and then we get into it. So anyway, look, that's about it for me. Um, nothing much to add. There's one more after this where we run them and that's it. So I hope you enjoy. So one thing I've noticed with these, there's different size pins locating pins on the different pistons are probably easy to see on that because it's a brass one um and some of the rings when you buy them don't fit or at least they the ring end gap turns out it will specify all right where's my other specs hang on <clears throat> but these aren't going around that pin properly i don't know if you can see that so what happens is the ring sits proud and you can't get it in or it's too tight um i've just had to use a file to file around them to get them to sit. That's a 20 over. Hang on, where's the standard one? And I think that's going to be all right. So I've not taken any off the actual ends of it. These ends, because I measured it in the bore, where is it there? And it's right on 8,000s. So I'm happy with that. It's just around where the pins go. Now, I've seen a couple of these pistons like that, and it's something you need to look out for if you're going to, you know, reco one of these engines, I guess. Here's the tank. I've screwed it up in a way. I haven't bothered fixing those dents there because that's where it's sort of clamped down on the engine cowl. I don't think that matters. But the other thing I did was I forgot to unmask it after I'd painted it. Of course, I'm just going to have to touch up those areas. This thing is just so mint inside. It's brilliant. It's like brand new. Um, John did a fantastic job with that. Now it came with, I'm just going to pop that back on, this plastic later modelled uh, tap, which is no good to us because a little um, spigot for the fuel line has been disconnected or at least broken off and that just sort of screwed in there and screwed in quite well. Same thread, but of course it's not really very usable the way it is. So we've got this one that came as well with the box of parts in the 18 and we can scotch bright it up and make it look nice and spiffy but 
really it's a far more desirable sort of unit because all you've got essentially is you've got this little grub screw thing and you take it out and that's got an extension on it like the collaborator slides same sort of thing and the tap has a sort of mortise in there that it runs up and down in and two o-rings so i think we'll get our dentist tool and take those off right so this is not going to seal it's too loose in there it's going to leak we know that i use a dentist tool um, for checking fillings and I roll this the o-ring out these ones are really fried the worst thing you can do here is impale yourself Aldi selection here now o-rings are sometimes better being too small than too big that's the case if you overhaul a transmission an auto trans um, what about these green ones Oops. Um, if you're doing the um, O-rings and the servos, and you get them too big, they'll never seal. Actually, those green ones look like they're going to do a better job. So, I'm going to just stick that under, and you can just literally derail it like that. It's just an easy way to go. And try these green ones. And we might have to... Um, gee lubricate that so it sits in there they might be too broad actually right they're too big the reason i'm saying that is because when you put it in that one there looks too small but see it wants to roll out so we've got to just mess around until we find the right size it looks like it's going to catch but not roll out if you know what i mean i'm just using castor oil based rubber grease use it for brakes calipers and stuff like that um, and it won't sort of damage the rubber. Um, I'm a bit worried I might have damaged... Hang on a minute. I might just... Because I'm not totally comfortable with something I did. I might take off that one. I think I damaged this ring here. Yeah, I did. I'm just going to take that out. And I'll put another one in. I just... I nicked it. And I just wasn't convinced it wasn't going to be fine anyway and i'm just going to give it a nice general helping generous helping stick that in there lubricate the entrance and it will just slide in and do what it's supposed to do where's that mortise mortise is there so we just get our grub screw i don't want to scratch that and that ladies and gents should be a chicken dinner Just got a tube on there and make sure it doesn't leak. Should be fine. That's good. I think there's supposed to be ones there, but there's not, which is probably why it's all dented. Looks pretty cool though. I love the way it looks. Where's the strap? I just want to scratch it up. Just like that, I think that should do it. And we haven't got the front pads, but I don't think that matters. I'm just going to put that lock nut in, I reckon that'll be alright. Get that central because once I tighten it up, it's probably going to be a bit scratched. I think we're going to have to have it a bit offset like that to allow room for the tab. But on the whole, I think that's all right. I'll have to put on wooden blocks to get the nuts on, but uh, that looks really good. And just that's how it's sort of going to appear when it's done. So it looks really, really pretty. There we go. There's a small washer, hang on a minute.
is looking fairly good. I've made this. Um, well, I haven't finished it, and um, I did it wrong. The it's just a little bit loose over the inlet port, and a little bit tight to get into the carburetor. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to make another one, or at least dock that off and just machine it down further. And so I want it to be a reasonably tight fit over there. Um, the same in the carburetor, and then I want to just run a hacksaw down part way, so that when we clamp it, it stays there. Uh, otherwise, it's looking quite fine. Um, although these are quarter inch Whitworth, um, this one, this thread here is flogged down. I don't know what that is. It's got a thread in it, but I don't know what the thread is, so I'm not really sure. Um, the rest I'm just waiting on, you know, decompressor kits. Um, I thought I'd ordered them, and I didn't. So I'm sort of behind with that one. Um, and also, got a bunch of fuel line. I got sort of lashed on that. This thing here, I've painted the top to suit, which it looks really, really good, although I haven't cleared that yet. Tried gold on here, and it looks terrible. Um, just doesn't look right. So I think we might do that white to start with, just to, to what do you call it, match the bars. And if that doesn't work, we'll just have to do a black. So I'm just gonna re repaint that white. Um, then all this can go on. I've got that little union that goes in there. It's not fitted properly yet. Just got to punch it down a bit further. And then that sort of cowling can go on. I'll put a G3 on here, so I'll take that off. Um, and I've also got to weld up the uh, muffler. I'm going to use a torpedo, and this is the one that's broken. So that, I don't know if these are ever on 160s, but that will fit. And I've just got to offset one of the brackets I pulled off the... Um, the box type mufflers. I have none of those left. Um, I've got this left and I need to buy another one. I sent Norm a message but I haven't heard back yet with a, a few bits that I wouldn't mind. Um, but this one's coming along really really well. The worst thing about this is every time you fold these bars you scratch the crap out of them here. I'm going to leave them sort of in that position um, in an effort to try and that way I can access everything, if you know what I mean. Um, and it can just be stored like that. Oops. And this is all the wrong colours, generally. Like, it's just, oops. I haven't even got the wheels or the axles on, but you can get the axles on easily, because they attach from above. So I'm sort of repairing those at the moment. And, you know, it should all be good. Mm. Now I've got limited knowledge and limited supply of Whitworth fasteners. Um, my uh, father-in-law passed away in 2015. It was very upsetting. He was a real father figure to me. <clears throat> I got along with him a lot better than my wife did. And he was just a wonderful chap. And he, when he passed away, my mother-in-law said, look, there's a whole lot of stuff in the garage. Is there anything you want? And I went out there and I picked up some drawers similar to those, like little drawers full of nuts and bolts. And I thought, oh, look, I probably won't use these. And I haven't stopped using them. I've used heaps of washers out of there, lock washers. In this case, the Whitworth fasteners too. These are all out of that thing too. So I'm going to leave this one here for now. Um, I do have to get a new plug for it. It's a deeper reach one, an N21 or whatever they're called. Um, I've got a pigtail wire coming out there to earth it out to stop it. I don't know how these things stopped, but that being said, I can put a little switch under there on and off that can just be trapped on a bracket underneath one of these so you're not drilling any holes. And that will um, just make it easier because I prefer those. That just does the points out so you can't generate a spark. And of course, we've got this really lovely carburetor um, with original bracket, <coughs> pardon me, and that will just sit in there and look really spiffy. And we'll just put a little, little choke thing on there as well. As I keep saying, this is just made of bits out of a box that I picked up for very, very, um, a very, very low price indeed. So I've got to get some wheels. I just get some red steel wheels for it. Um, I'm not paying $150 for worn out Victor 18 wheels. This is a nice little piece anyway, just the way it is. So I'm reasonably happy with it. These things are such a great dumpy ground. I bought these from Super Cheap Auto. 
and I bought them to fit the rear guards on the motorcycles and they're just not right. And the quality of the rubber doesn't feel that great anyway for that sort of application. And I love the fact that these mowers have been a dumping ground for all the stuff I didn't like that I had. They work beautifully in this sort of application. If I just pull that boot down. Yeah, get on there. It might be the wrong boot for the motor, but yeah, they, they just look so good. And I've got them coming out of the magnetos and everything as well. They're perfect. I've used them on most of the motors. Um, I think there's one under there, and because the original Victor ones have just fallen apart. Uh, right, so speaking of dumping grounds, this is from a 125, and this is a 160 engine. I've got the, with the other muffles I had that were knackered, I actually broke those off, so I can literally mark up where that goes. I might go behind that. And just mark it out, stick a bolt there, and I can see exactly what I'm going to do with that. And you won't see this, this will be underneath that cowl. But I'm just going to weld it on. Um, and that way this would, and I actually prefer these torpedoes because they just use a clamper and it hasn't got that gasket thing and the funny clips that sometimes don't work that well. The Mayfair, the original one I had, I only had one clip, so I actually made, I welded two shorter clips together to make one, and it ended up looking quite neat. Uh, but look, that'll work. Um, I might just cut a bit down there. Where's my Sharpie? Sharpie? Oh, man, I'm going to scratch these things. So I can sort of weld up into there, and then I might just take that bit off, just round it off or something, and just make it look a bit better. Although I don't want to take too... No, that'll be alright. I'll just take that sharp edge off there. I've got my hand in the way, I'm sorry. And it should look quite neat, I think. But firstly, I'll just weld. I might weld it on the other side. Maybe put a bead there or something, I'm not sure. Then we'll wire brush this off and we'll paint it, and it'll look really good against that green, I think. I prefer the torpedoes. They just look more... I don't know. Period, I guess. But anyway... isn't great. I'm not proud of this. I've put this, um, what do I call it? Torpedo muffler on. The thing is a bit of a paradox because it's got a G4 carby on it. I can't avoid that because I needed a port to, um, for the decompressor. And the other G3s I've got don't have that port and nor does the, the, the manifold down in there. So I've had to use that modern carburetor on a pseudo old um, machine. That being said, I know about it. Well, now everyone knows about it. Let's watch this, but it doesn't worry me that much. You know, I'll put the lid on and yeah, I'll just face it this way so I can see the muffler. Now, I painted that in black instead of silver because the muffler's knackered. It's got some pinholes there, another hole there. It's rooted. So, um, it's all I got though. You know what I mean? Like, I actually have no choice. So, we'll stick with that for now. We can. I got a whole lot of. Wee, where are you going, Trifon? I've got a whole lot of stuff plated, so I'll change that out to make it look a bit nicer. We can probably redo the white, but I'm not too fussed about that. I've changed that thing there for that one to make it look nice. Um, I also got one of these done, but I'll wait and I'll stick it on one of the better machines. Right, so we've got that top cleared. I've only just done it now, so it's really quite soft. And I've done this in the white, the same as the Fords, the Wimbledon white. And I always get teased about that. And I think that will look infinitely better. I think it's going to be fine. So we're going to go with that. Um, I like it. That little bug liked it, which is why he landed in it when I painted it. So that's all good. Um, the other thing is I've changed over. I'm just going to put that there to dry. I've replated these. I took them out of a couple of controls. And they were all rusty and look pretty crummy. But we can also do this like emboss bit with the white. And um, sort of freshen it. Well, sorry about that. Freshen it up a bit. So we've got all that hooked up. Um, that was has a new air filter element in it. So this one's nearly done. The only thing I don't like about it is that G4 cubby on it. Um, it doesn't look old school enough. But given the circumstances, I don't really care. The only other G4 we're using is this one, which was in my original daily on the 125, and that's going in that little starlet blue one. Um, this one had all of that stuff in it. All that. 
that muck from those plane trees. You can see there it's absolutely filthy. The thing still ran well though. I mean it knocked, but it still ran alright. So I've got to pull this apart and clean all that out and then we can reuse that one as well. Have a look at this. I'm surprised this thing ran. I mean that is a bloody mess. Look at it. We're going to clean that right up. Unreal banana peel. The float chamber looks alright. Um, that stuff all looks quite good. Nothing got to that. It's just where the air passage was. And that's just from having a split pipe. <laughs> so it's pretty messed up. Righto. So, let's talk about these. The covers. Um, the best way to do these is hydroblasting. There's two reasons why I haven't. One is I've basically overcapitalized on these mowers and I'm not prepared to spend any more money. Um, and the other reason is I wanted to change the color of some of them. So it means painting them um, in a cheap paint. This has been done in enamel and you can't use an acrylic paint over that. You can only recoat enamel with an enamel. Uh, in pulling them apart, there's a couple of things. There's this spring, which is horrendous. The spring is wound and sitting against ledges, and it's sort of held in with friction, if you know what I mean. Um, it's sort of expanding out like that. I don't want to take it out. The result is you could probably cable tie it. I cable tied one of them, um, leaving it in and cable tying it, if you know what I mean. But then I decided, well, I don't really need it. But, you know, there's always the risk of pulling it out and then it slides and it ends up this round, and I don't want that. So I'm leaving the springs in there, which means Hydroblasting is out of the question. Um, some of them are missing odds and ends, like washers that are down there, and you can see that bottom part of the housing there is chewed out. It's got muck on it, we need to clean that. And it's not that chewed out, but it's messy. Oh no, it's not chewed out at all. What am I talking about? I thought it was chewed out. So we can clean all that sort of stuff out, and I'm not overly worried about it. But in saying that, some of them have a washer down the bottom that sits there. I don't know if I, I had one that fitted the other one quite well, yeah, like this. And I don't think that's a bad idea to leave in there for when we reassemble it. Now, this is originally black. Some of my cradle count it's silver. I don't like it. There's that washer that's come out. It was done by somebody else and I bought it oh, years ago. It works well. And I don't like this plate that's been screwed in the top. That being said, the mechanism is good. And as you pull it, it will sort of turn and allow you to start the thing. Now on the stickers uh, that I've been putting on, or that I've put on one of the mowers, they recommend using a clear coat. Uh, they say an acrylic clear. I use this on that other one, the first one, the daily, and I'm really, really happy with it. It's a good product. You get a great gloss out of it, um, and it will offer you protection. Now, on the bases that are painted in acrylic, which is most of them, we can mask off around them and just lick over the stickers to protect them, with that sort of stuff. That runs in at 15 bucks from Milsom's. I'll have a go at rattle gun cam. No, that's not working. Um, this is pretty messed up, this thing, but... We'll try it. If it looks absolutely terrible, who cares? We'll just use something else. I've got another white one, but it's not terribly good. I haven't even taken that thing out because it's damaged in there as well. These sorts of things are very hard to get now. You know, there's nothing easy about them. And you can see how knocked around it is. Um, the silver's probably a better choice for it because it tends to cover better for some reason. Um, this is actually naked. But I want you to see that, you know, you can't make everything perfect. And we do have to put a screw, put the screws on the um, budget a bit. I've been spending too much money. And I miscalculated because I might let that tack off and then I'll give it another hit. Um, the mowers are sort of, you take an average of everything I've spent over all of them, it's closer to 250 bucks. And you know, you can probably sell them for 300 each, but that's in an ideal world. I don't think they're worth that. 
and they're only worth what someone will pay. So I'm just going to go over that a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Clean the jet out. Anyway, we'll just leave that be and come back later. Okay, we've got a little 18, and you can see in the end there that's a much bigger housing that, than that's going to allow for. My favourite material to turn is Delrin. It's beautiful. I've only got that much left of the big stuff. I've got some small ones that I got from Richard, a friend of mine. Whoops, my first attempt um, was too loose on there and too tight there, but I made another one. Uh, what I'm going to do in order to make it seal is just pop an O-ring down and there's a sort of a, a ledge on the edge of the cylinder where that can seal and then that will slide over. Um, should probably put it that way. That could leak air though. Um, I think I'll do it that way. Should I? Yes, I'll do it that way. Right, so I'm looking at these marks, which are the sort of marks where it clamps up and it's going to go that way. It's a nice tight fit. So by doing it and putting it on, that should work. That's probably a better thing. So it's sealing against the back there and it's sealing against here as well. Hey, yuck. I don't want that on my paint. So we can get that on. Might be easy before the carburetor goes on. Well, marginally, I think. Oh, a little bit. Let's just get that off. Alright, Kirby. I'll just nip him up. I've got to put the throttle thing on yet, I haven't done that. That's good. That is going to go like that. I'm just going to clip that with this guy. I don't want to scratch the powder coating though because I just don't want to. Nice couple of scratches there, we're good. Yeah, that can go up. I think I've got another one of those, I'm not sure. I certainly think I need it. Just to keep that in the right orientation, although that's in the way of the fuel tap now, which is a pain. So does it have to go down further, like that? So you can access that? Don't know. We're just going to have to play it by ear. Um, the other thing is, the other 18 I had, I had a long bit of fuel hose there, because it was sort of looped around, but this one might be alright if I cut it. Oh, there-ish, and bring him out on a radius, just so it doesn't kink. That should be right. I don't know. I've no idea. You tell me. You've probably done this more than I have. There we go. That looks rather spiffy. Mm -hmm. um, this is not particularly great. It's just that shoehorn in the bottom that's an old bit of hose from the um, other mower. I haven't got the right hose, and it's the wrong clip, and I don't care because I just want to start it. So that'll do for now for this one. Um, I do have to put the throttle on. The cable's like yards of it. So that'll do for now. I'm just going to pull it around. It's got quite a lot of tension. I should probably put gloves on for this one. Um, but I had a sort of a, a look at it before. Uh, hang on, where are we going? No, it's not working, is it? Let's have some tea. It's really nice. Maybe if I pull that out and go a bit tighter, eh? Just try it. Oh dear me. Oh, this looks like it's doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got some tension on it now. Let's make it nice and tight. And have more tea. This is a good thing about being a mechanic, you sort of, over the years, you develop really strong hands. Okay, so what I've got to do is get it around, give it a bit more strength. Oh, more tea. Right, let's go again. Nope, that's too much. Right. 
Okay, that should work. So if I bring him around and stick it in there, that should be fine. I think it is. And it's sitting in those little stands. Well, it's not on that side, but it is on this side. How dirty is it? Cool, it's not too dirty yet. I had to mask that off. I couldn't have to get it out before. Right, so I'm going to get the other stuff ready now. I might go and wash my hands. Right, so I've got a spool here. And some rope. And I've tied a little knot there. And I don't know if I'm doing this right or wrong. Um, but I did, I did one before and it seemed to be alright, so... We're good. Okay. Um, I'm just going to push that through there. And we should be ready to rumble. Hang on, we're not quite ready. We are now. Right, so we want it to be in that direction. Because we're going to pull it right that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to wind him on there. There's a V there. I haven't looked at the manual. I probably should have, but I didn't. Right. Where's some sticky tape? Where's my bloody tape? There it is. Okay. Let's have a look. See if we can do this properly and quickly because the time is against us. Okie dokie. Rather spiffy. Right. I'm just going to put a light smear of grease. It's a terrible word, smear. I hate it. Now some of these have washers, like I said before, this one didn't seem to be, it's a different assembly. Um, you know how it is. And I don't want to dirty this thing up. Right. That spring in the centre has to catch with that guy there. Whoops. So I'm just going to put him in and I can see the window. Going to get a screw stick. And now I can't see. <laughs> Where's the gap? There's the gap. That should go in. And it's almost there. Right, look at that. Sweet. Okie dokie. Now, what are we doing now? We're sticking thrust washers and stuff in. And we'll give them a bit of a lube. Uh, we'll stick that in there. And we've got another one. And we'll stick that in there. Then we've got that little shoe thing that comes out. And whoa, which way is this going? Yeah, not really sure. Let's take a punt and stick it in that way. Like that. And when you pull it, they should sort of canter themselves. It might not. I might have got the wrong way. I don't know. That's something I'm not sure about. Uh, more thrusties. And like that. And... What I'm going to do is get the string out of there and stick it in through that hole. So I'm just going to button all this stuff up first. There's another washer. Uh, like that. Put it. Alright, so we put those on. We've tightened that up. We're good. So we've got to wind it. And depending on which one you do, some of them need to be wound. One was wound four times. Which I think it's too much. I'm just going to wind it a couple. So we go one, two, and I'm going to bring that around to there and take this tape off and then pull that guy out and we're going to try and thread it. Now this is the one thing I didn't do when I did this I didn't take that spring out and plate it or any of that stuff because basically that is a can of worms because if that breaks that nipple it's sitting on it's just a pain. I just don't want to go down that road and we can just whoops tie this guy on here and we should be rather dandy and I think we're out of it. There's a way of doing it, it's kind of double knot, I'm not sure how to do that. Um, I'm just going to give it a single one and hopefully then we have some form of success. Sweet. And when we pull it, those things do what they're supposed to do. So let's stick this back on the mirror. Now we've got all the stickers. Actually, I might put a bit of stuff on here. 
but all the stickers are on their way. And that will improve appearances a little bit. So we'll just screw this guy down. Screw it down. Some of these use a counter sink and some of them use that or counter sunk and some use a pan head. Um, the other one I think is all counter sunk, although that one looked like it might have been as well, but let's face it, I'm not really sure and I'm not about to change it now. I also sanded the corner off to give a sharper line on the plastic housing. I didn't like the way it looked before. So I'll just nip that up. Right, well this is pretty well finished. Um, a couple of things this needs, I'm not going to film because they take two minutes to put on. Um, hubcaps, they're the two I've got left, that's it. Um, if I can find a set, we'll stick some hubcaps on it. Um, otherwise we'll just leave them wide, they're very clean. I've just wrapped some, some of this around here just to protect the deck. Stickers are all ordered, they're on the way. Um, it's got that lovely torpedo on it. The, ooh, I can't do it too much because it's going to roll, but that's all working. Now, there's a couple of things wrong with this. Which one is it? I've got some bushes somewhere. I might make another bush for that wheel. It's wobbly. I don't like it. The other thing is, when you lift it, I don't like that. So we've got to get some new um, axle, the little stay things, the hook-shaped hardened steel thing. I need two sets, right? So I need four of those. Um, this turned out great. I've got some plastic discs to protect the powder coating. We can put the bars up. I've got to clean these up a bit more, but that's sort of really ingrained in the plastic. They're off an 18. They're a spare set of 18 ones I had. They look better than the other ones that were there. So in the next video, this one will be started up and we'll have all its stickers on to be complete. So that's it for that one. The only thing, actually, before I go too much further that I'm not keen on is the fact that it has a G4 carburetor. It's too modern for this, but with the parts I had, that's all I could use. Um, I do have to work the throttle out. I haven't done that yet. Not the throttle, what's that called? The kill switch. But aside from that, what can you do? It's fine. So we're almost complete with a few of these. Um, I need to get a bit of 6 mil stainless rod to put the catcher door on that one. That utility is done, although the bars are wrong. They're too long for it. That being said, I already fitted them before I realised and um, I put the shorter, sorry, the longer cable on. I've got a couple of short ones, a couple of long ones. So I'm trying to make all the bits I've got fit. Um, I need a lid for this and that one's done. The stickers are on the way for all of them. This one we're finishing off now. This one has the flat bar at the top, which is what I wanted. I didn't want the hook bar. Um, so I'm just sort of making things work at the moment. I've got to check the continuity on the kill switch, if you want to call it that. And also I had to bend that there to clear the G3 because that whoops, cover has a governor underneath for a G4. Uh, but we're getting there. It's looking, you know, fairly all right. Um, as I said, you know, stickers are coming. I had that one off the kit for the Mayfair and the Mayfair uses a different one. That's a wine start. So, you know, that's all coming along well. And I'm sort of down to the way a bit with parts, so I was just sort of using 240 on this. This has got, like, the top layer, it's just been affected with UV, and it's breaking down, and somebody's used texture on there. So I'm just using 240 on here to get rid of all of that, and that will be fine. Um, doing those ridges might be a pain, I don't want to spend too much time doing this, to be quite honest. I'm not that sort of fussed about it. But I do need to get them to look a little bit better. And the same with the thumb wheels on the handlebar adjustment. They're rubbish. But once we've gone 240, we'll go 360 and then 600, I think, and that'll do. Um, you can keep going up through the grids and then polish the things, but that is just not going to happen. Um, I need to finish these videos off because it sort of outstayed the welcome with a few of the viewers. <laughs> and they pay bills. So I've got to do what I can for them to make it worthwhile for them to stay with me but yeah this has got all this flaky crap on the top um, I might get a bucket of water it might be easier than spraying it and just dunk it in the bucket because that does two things it makes the paper last a lot longer and will give a smoother result but we're getting there we're getting through that top layer of nonsense and 
once we're finished, it should look a heck of a lot better than it does. Um, another one bites the dust. Um, this one's our little starly base one, I guess you could say. And it looks fairly good about that. How is this still dirty? I cleaned that. Um, these are from the ice cream container lids. And because these, are, it's just, it's, it's asking to get the powder coating scratched. So I've just put those in. And when you pull that, they actually flex quite well and they protect the powder coating from getting damaged. Um, all the stickers are ordered. A lot of stickers are ordered. So they're all going to have their nice little decals on them. And I've just got to do things like this. That's the that's a broken part of a switch um, to turn the thing off. And of course the wires down there. So I've just got to look at stuff like this. Um, just teething stuff, you know, a little bracket. Like these things. Um, putting those on and sorting out the throttles. This one's all sorted. That's the air cleaner and throttle and carburetor off the original, well, off that engine, actually. So anyway, look, um, that's about it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. What do you reckon? Shit, but... Shit, that's fucking...